In this tutorial, I'm gonna go through some basic things just to get you started and put you on the right course and show you the resources that I've used in the past to better help myself learn how to program. Computer programming is a difficult topic to cover because learning it can span a lifetime. Now there are three things which I think you should do to make your journey into computer programming as easy as possible. Number one, don't worry about what programming language you're gonna use, just use Python. It's flexible, but powerful, but more than anything, it has an amazing community of people out there who have written lots of programs for you. In addition, if you ever wanna connect any external peripherals to your Raspberry Pi, most of them will be controlled through Python, so it's a really good place to start. So it's going to be a very compatible programming language to learn. As languages go, Python is quite an easy one to learn compared to some of the more complicated ones, so it really is the perfect place to start. Two, don't forget that learning this is a bit like learning a musical instrument or learning a language. It's going to take quite a lot of time to become very, very proficient in this. Don't let that deter you. It is very easy to do some powerful and creative things with programming without too much time invested in it. Number three, have a project in mind. It is incredibly helpful to know what it is you want to achieve. Whether or not it is you want to write a piece of code for work that's gonna make your job more efficient. Maybe you want to do something fun like build a wildlife camera trap or build a robot. They're great projects to work towards. So let's fire up our Raspberry Pi and get started. So in our main menu under programming, we have two options available to us. We need to use what's called an IDE, and that's where we type our code into. Now the Pi has two options baked into it by default. This one here, which is for beginners, and then the one above it, which is called MU. Fantastic. Now we have this loaded, we want to be able to check which mode we're running in. Now there are four different modes available to us, but we're just gonna use Python 3 at the moment. So let's select that. Now we need to create a new folder, somewhere where we can actually store all of our code into. So I'm gonna create a folder on the desktop called Python code and save that. And then I'm gonna quickly save this first program. So I'm gonna to browse to Py, desktop, Python code. In there, I'm just gonna create my first program called Python 1. So let's just quickly full screen our IDE. Now what you can see here is the hash. When hash is used in front of text, this is a comment. So it's like a note that we've left for ourselves to help us understand the code, but doesn't actually execute or do anything. So our first example, the first piece of coding we're gonna do is we're just gonna print some text to the screen. And to do that in the Python language, you just say print brackets, and then in speech marks, you say what you want to say. So in this example, we're just gonna say, hello world. Now to execute this code, we just press the run button up the top there, and below, down here, we can see that the code is executed and it has printed the words, hello world, to the screen. So we're gonna quickly stop that program from running. Now, we're gonna do something useful. We're gonna add the backslash and n, which enters a character line feed in between those two words, basically an enter. So what we get is hello, and then on the second line, world. This helps us manipulate our text around a little bit. Let's just quickly delete that, and let's start our next program. Now, we're gonna have a look at variables. Variables are how we store information into the memory or the RAM of our Raspberry Pi, or any computer for that fact. Now, we're going to create two variables, num1 and num2 for numbers, and we're gonna store the variables 10 and five. And we do that by just adding an equals in between. So num1 equals 10 and num2 equals five. And then we're gonna say print num1 and print num2 to the screen. So we should just see the numbers 10 and 5 on the screen. You'll notice that when we type num, we don't happen to have the speech marks between it. With the speech mark, it will say num1, and without, it will print the value of num1, which is 10. So let's just put the speech marks back in and see how that looks. Do something slightly more complicated with this. We want to do some addition. So we're gonna add these two numbers together. So we're gonna create a new variable, which is called answer, and we're gonna to, to add num1 and num2 together, and then we're gonna print the answer, and we can see that, that it prints out number 15. Pretty simple stuff. Now there's a few other simple things we can do to manipulate these numbers. We can subtract. So we just change the addition, the addition symbol to be a minus symbol, and we can also, can also multiply. So we're gonna change that to the multiply symbol, and we can also do division. So let's just put the division symbol in. Now, if we run that code, we can see the add gives us 15, which is 10 plus five is 15. Subtraction gives us five. The multiplication gives us 50, and the division gives us two. So we know that the computer can do simple maths. 
that's great. Those numbers on their own aren't very user friendly. So let's combine the results from our test and add some text to the output. So it makes it slightly easier for the users to understand what's going on. So let's quickly delete all but the answer section and add a print statement and give the user a nice message. Now you notice what we do is we're going to add the speech marks around the text that we want to say and then a comma afterwards. And then after that, we're gonna add the variable answer. And here we get a slightly more user-friendly output. The answer is 15. Let's stop that code. Now for this small example, we want to, instead of hard coding the variables into the Python code, we want to ask the user the values they want to put in. So let's make a simple addition calculator by asking the user what numbers they want to add into their code. Now, first thing we need to do is collect the user's input. So we're gonna create the code that says num values, number value that we want to collect from the user equals int. So int stands for integer, and in computing language, integer means numbers, or whole numbers at least. And then we're gonna have some brackets, I'm going to say input because we want to collect the input from the user. And then we're going to put a nice friendly message in like we did earlier that says enter a number and then double close brackets, enter a number, enter the number 10. So we've managed to store that input into a variable field, but let's do something a bit more advanced with that. Now the examples we've gone through so far have come from this book, which is called Python by Example. It's a fantastic Python learning guide that has over 150 challenges and we've stepped through the first three or four that we've done so far. Here's a brief overview of what's covered in the books and I feel like it's one of the simplest and easiest introductions to Python I've ever seen. And it's this part one section we've gone through a couple of examples. You can see here some of the basic things we've gone through. We've gone through some print statements. We've gone through that very quick, easy user input section. And we've also gone through some number manipulation. So what we're going to quickly do now is we're going to go jump into the middle of these first challenges and go to number five. We're going to ask the user to enter three numbers. We're going to add the first two numbers together and then multiply the addition of the first two numbers by the third number we enter. And then we're going to output the answer by saying the answer is, and there we go. So let's do that. We're going to do number value integer, so numbers, and we're going to do an input. And then again, we're going to put this into a nice and friendly message for the user. Please enter your first number, end the quotes, and then close off that statement. And because I'm very lazy, I'm going to copy that statement a couple times and just adjust the couple of bits we need just to make life easy for ourselves. There we go. So please enter your second number and your third number. Change those variables to num2 and num3. So the answer is going to equal num1 value plus num2 value. And we're going to put these two in brackets, multiply that by num3 value. And we want to print that to the screen so we can see what the final answer is. There we go. So we've combined the examples that we showed at the beginning of this video. And then we're going to quickly run that code. So please enter your first number. I'm going to enter 2 plus 3 times by 5. And the answer is 25. So 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And that's a, the first simple program we've done. Now, we're going to quickly close the IDE and we're going to run the code directly from the command line and not inside the IDE anymore. This is a way a lot of code tends to be run on most systems. So we're going to quickly chain, check which directory we're in and we're going to change into the desktop directory and into the Python code directory and have a quick look in there. We can see that Python 1.py, that's on our desktop, is there. And we're going to say Python 3 and then the name of the file.py and then start that code and run. And again, you can see we can go through the same thing here. And that's how we would run the code via the CLI without the IDE. Now the book I recommended you can get from Amazon. It costs around 10, 15 pounds, depending if you want to get a physical copy. I got the Kindle version because that's how I like to read my books. It's got fantastic ratings for most people and I honestly believe it's the best book in the market for learning how to program Python at the moment from, the, from a beginner's perspective. However, if you want something slightly more interactive, there is a fantastic website called Code Academy. It allows you to go through step-by-step -step tutorials not just listening and watching on videos, but also letting you type in code as well. Here is an example of me navigating through the site. And here you can see we're going through a simple print statement. So you can see we're able to type in code. And if we're successful with writing the correct syntax that the exercise requires, we are able to proceed to the next stage. And this can really get quite advanced. The downside is at the moment it only supports Python 2 for free. And if you want to learn Python 3, then you have to sign up to their pro accounts. 
So you can see here that their pricing plan isn't the cheapest, but they are the best on the market for this type of online interactive learn as you go coding sites. If you're young, I would definitely check out Code Club. Code Club is somewhere where you can go, meet other enthusiastic programmers like yourself. There are volunteers who run the clubs who will help you learn and give you lots of interesting challenges. And it's one of the best ways to learn. I hope this video has been useful and has pointed you in the right direction to start your journey in programming. To support this channel, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and to click that bell to get future notifications for videos we put out. Thanks for watching.